Hi everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here. In this second part of the interview with Mel and Ella after Edutech and their attendance at my flipped learning breakout session, Mel uh, talks a little bit more in depth about her thoughts on flipped learning both as a parent and as a teacher. I think one of the things that benefits students like Ella Grace with flipped learning is the self-pacing. Mm-hmm. So that ability to be able to move through content at their pace yeah. um, rather than, you know, it being dictated. And that works for the students on both ends of the spectrum. Sure. Um, but I think we, we spend a lot of time trying to think about how to, you know, how to kind of catch up students. But I don't know that we've thought about um, flipped learning for gifted education too. Um, I think we've talked about, you know, the obvious parts where, um, students can watch at their own pace, they can replay it, they can go over and over and over again. Um, but we forget those students at the other end of the spectrum where they're, in, you know, in that cookie cutter model of a classroom that we still have, yeah. you know, it, despite our best intentions, um, those kids are either just getting bored um, or they're usually the compliant, quiet kids. Mm. Um, so they're certainly not reaching their potential. And I think being able to access um, more, I, I'm not necessarily thinking content moving up grades, I'm more thinking about how to go deeper. Yep. And I think that that's something that teachers can do quite easily um, in a flipped context. Do you think then, I suppose, obviously Ella is, is, is a bright a bright student, um, you know, she's at the, I suppose you call it the top end of the academic sort of ladder. Do you feel that if she was at the other end, do you feel that flipped learning would support her as well? Uh, Absolutely, and you know my son is at the opposite end. So, um, and I think students, it, it's a no-brainer for those students because it means that they can just watch things over and over again. They can press pause. They can go back. They can, you know, pause, pause it, go and Google something. You know, they can, they really can follow at their own pace. For those students, especially, um, particularly like auditory processing. Um, students mm-hmm. to order their thoughts is really complicated and so having something where you can pause um, or even um, you know my son has auditory sensitivity as well so background noise in the classroom is really difficult for him so he misses half of the explicit instruction because of the noise that's around him so being able to put a being able to put a pair of headphones on and be able to just focus in on the content that the teacher's, um, you know, speaking, you know, he would actually retain far more of that, I think. So I think the students are across the spectrum. And I think for me it's always made sense for those students and it's been a differentiation strategy that you can use for those students. But I, I, come, I come back to... You know, I don't know that we've thought about it in the opposite um, ends of the spectrum, but I, I think it works for all students. I think even in those early years, um, you know, the rate of development is so different. And so being able to have, you know, three or four different, um, you know, say you're explaining one concept, but you can explain it at three different levels. Um, that's, you know, in the early years is fantastic. I was working with, um, with you two today, and I don't know if you saw at Edutech the, there was the flowers, the Makey Makeys, so the musical. Yes, yep. Yeah. So we've done something similar to that with AE2s. Um, we created a sculpture and they, uh, they created the sculpture and they then um, recorded three different sounds in Scratch and then programmed those sculptures to become musical instruments. Cool. So, um, yeah, and that's there we showcased at our Art for Live um, next week. Yeah. Now, I was able to, because that's quite complex, um, I, I recorded myself um, talking through the process so that those girls that, you know, could get it straight away, they were going to get it straight away. Yeah. Those girls that needed to hear it over and over and over again, um, we, we were able to achieve what I would normally position as probably a year four project we were able to do with these twos because of using flipped learning. In the junior school where, you know, in reception year three and year five, where they particularly do units with the, with our other human robot, I think that I wouldn't do the flipped. I think I'd have text, flipped, text. Ah. So that would actually be, that would be what I would do. 
um, is I would have, I would have, I would have um, just a film text um, introducing itself. And, and, and I've done, done that, that with the year threes, and I absolutely loved that. that before they had ever even seen a humanoid robot, we got them to draw what a robot was. And it was that box, you know, yeah. you know, that kind of, um, do you remember that perfect match? You know, Dexter was that kind of look yeah. of the robot. Um, R2D2 kind yeah. of you know, that's <laughs> what we're yeah. and, um, and and I recorded text you know introducing himself and and saying what you know how he operated and those kind of things and their look on their faces was like <laughs> that just amazed and then I had him walk in so they, they were introduced they, they got a message um, through our learning management system saying hi I'm coming to learn with you tomorrow and introduced himself and then and he walked in the classroom, classroom. they and already they had, had a reference point, yep. they already had a frame of reference. So I would I'm definitely do more of that. that. Um, and, and it's, it's also, also in terms of the humanoid, um, it kind of, um, when you want, want to do those explicit parts, parts, particularly, I probably do more screen casting mm-hmm. for that because they like, need to see how to, you know, particularly if they're trying to get, when the year three do a basic task. Yeah. Um, they're yeah, actually, you know, they yeah, they will, they will program, um, a program him to do a chore around their house. Like that, that's kind of their project. So they'll, um, so I often will screencast how to do some of those things. So then it's those going, going back to it. So yeah. you know, they don't get they can go back to it. So I just try and produce as much resource as I can for them. Um, and I just, they're just a video generation. Mm. There's three dimensional learners. They're used to being able to see, see and hear and engage at the same, same time. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. All right, well, thank you very much. I hope you found that two-part interview as interesting as I did. I always think it's interesting to hear from parents and students about what we're doing in the classroom and how they feel about it. Don't forget, for more uh, resources to help you get started with flipped learning, please visit c21teaching.com.au and click on the Starting with Flipped Learning tab up here in the menu. And don't hesitate to reach out to me on Twitter at c21 underscore teaching. Thanks very much for watching.